on is Asher coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I'm joined by a famous kid who is a pro, I believe, from Singapore here. A lot of requests to get him on the channel. He is currently 147 in the world, 7,000, closing in on 7,500 trophies here, going against uh, Pekka Bridge Spam, it looks like, here to start things out on this video. Now, again, a lot of requests for famous kid from you guys here to get him on the channel. He is one of the predominant uh, balloon cycle players out there inside the game. Not just this meta where balloons seems to be more prevalent but also in the last couple seasons this guy's been really just tearing it up with balloon cycles so I figured it would be really fun to get him on and see him play top ladder live here as we near the end of this season season 11 inside Clash Royale man really can't wait for that next update right guys are you with me I mean I don't know when it's going to be, but uh, we could we could use it. We could use an update here in the game. Uh, anyway, here comes the meta. Is is I actually don't mind the meta right now. I know some of you guys disagree with that, uh, but it, it just in terms of features, I'm looking for something to get me really get the juices flowing, you know, so to speak, uh, from Clash Royale again. So anyway, here we go. It's going to be a bandit at the bridge. Let's pay attention. Try teasing out the habits, kind of the the the, the routines that that uh, famous kid incorporates into his match is here now this deck has two great tanks ice golem and obviously minor and sometimes you're gonna see him combine both of those cards such as you just did there albeit with a half dead ice golem uh, but he's gonna be combining those cards for a big offensive assault so here we go we're gonna have to deal with this defensively we don't have enough elixir to stop that battle rim so we're gonna be splitting our damage not the end of the world we just go ahead and log that off and now again we have ice golem in hand we do so we kite that uh, bandit over to the opposite tower making sure both of those are towers can finish her off before she gets any more damage so here we go go at crossing over to double elixir time here uh nice uh 500 or so damage advantage for the opponent in this contest we go in with the balloon in minor notice how we went in with a predictive minor on where we thought he would drop the e-wiz and then we went with the log we also went with the snowball so a big big offensive assault there in the right lane able to even out actually scratch that give us the damage advantage here what a heads up play going against Bre Pekka Bridge Spam. You have to recognize, okay, do they have minions or do they have Magic Archer? Once you figure that out, okay, are they going to be playing? What's their main line of defense? More often than not, it's going to be the Electro Wizard. So you're going to want to go ahead and go in with that Predictive Miner, especially the first time that you do it, as we can see him do in that situation. So Royal Ghost is going to be down in the left. We have enough for a Bomb Tower. Bomb Tower is down. 10 seconds remaining. 8, 7, 6. Can we stop this here, guys? Five, four, oh, three, two, one. Unbelievable. The zap comes down just a second late. We want the ice golem there in the left lane, able to keep those towers alive. What a way to open up this video, guys. Let's go ahead and check in with Famous Kid, see where he is. 123, be right back. All right, guys, here we go in match number two against Mamati. Mamati in match number two. So what I want you to pay attention in this match on, guys, as we go in with that minor first play, is uh, kind of when he decides to go aggressive, try to, try to, every time he goes in with Balloon, let's try to kind of dissect and analyze, okay, why did he go in with Balloon there? So here we go, we're defending with the Musketeer, the opponent commits with three more Elixir with that minor. They also come in with a Log, so the opponent has spent a lot of Elixir here, so... I think almost definitely we're going to be going in with an attack after we defend against this, right? We're back to it. We have Balloon in, in hand. We're back to another Miner in hand after we play the Balloon. And here we go. Miner's down. Okay, we just go in with the Miner that time. So we have Snowball in hand. We're going to go ahead and use it against those bats. But notice how, you know, again, did not go with Balloon there. Just kind of play, played it passive. We did not see many air cards from the opponent either. All we saw was the Spear Goblins. So I'm assuming Famous Kid thought, you know what? I don't know what else he has for air exactly. I want to go ahead and defend one more sequence and kind of wait and see. And then we're going to go with this High Musketeer here. So very interesting. We go High Musketeer. We have Login Cycle here. We go ahead and use it right there. So, so far, we've only seen the bats and the log in this deck, and now we go in with a balloon. Notice how that balloon was placed a couple tiles back. Allows us to go with that miner first, so the miner's tanking for it. We go with that very, very beautifully timed snowball. Snowball's going to take down the bats, and unfortunately, we take some damage to our tower, but it's going to be evened out. We'll have a slight damage advantage in just a moment here once that log hits, and there it goes. So 1379 to 1503 with 15 seconds remaining here in single elixir time. So here we go, 10 seconds now. 
And both these players just taking a moment to collect themselves, recoup some elixir, about a one elixir lead for Mamadi, the opponent. So we go in aggressively again with the Ice Golem and the Balloon. We're going to go that Miner as well. Now we have the Snowball ready to go. We miss, unfortunately, those Wall Breakers. But here we go, guys. This Balloon's probably going to get death damage. No. All right, so nice job there by the opponent keeping that Balloon away. They go with a Predictive Log here for our Skeletons. We go with an Ice Golem. Going to temporarily get that Miner off the tower, and the Skeletons surround him. So nice job on the defensive end here by Famous Kid. This time again, protecting that Musketeer. The Snowball's down for those Bats again. Can we get this tower down here? We're going to go with some more Miner Chip. Another Miner comes in the opposite end. We're going to go with that Bomb Tower. The Bomb Tower is going to be ready to deflect those Wall Breakers. Take care of those Wall Breakers. We still go in with that Snowball as well. I like that Snowball there. Just making sure we take that tower, or excuse me, we prevent our tower from being uh, destroyed, <laughs> right? All right, so that was unfortunate Miner catch by the opponent. We're going to go in. Again, Bomb Tower is at the ready here. So beautiful Bomb Tower again. One second remaining. Here we go. It's going to be a... We have log back in cycle. We have snowball in cycle, too. I don't think we need the log. We go with the bomb tower. I guess we did need the log. Thank God he's playing and not me. All we need is one snowball to finish this off. We had the miners ready. Or, excuse me, the skeletons to catch the miner ready. Snowball's down. And there it is. GG's famous kid. We had the miners ready. We had the skeletons ready, dude. That was some textbook defense there, guys. That's a great match to re-watch and kind of sit there and study the habits of Famous Kid when he decided to go in with a balloon, when he didn't decide to go in with a balloon, when he used Bomb Tower on defense, when he used Skeletons on defense, how and when he used the Ice Golem on defense to push that Miner off of his tower. A ton of lessons from that second match. That was a textbook balloon cycle match. And we can go ahead and take a look at Famous Kid's profile now. He's top 100, 95th in the world, 7,514 trophies. Last season with this deck, he finished 99th in the world so top 100 just narrowly and of course he's won over 100 grand challenges and suffice it to say many of them coming with this balloon cycle deck so let's go ahead and come back at you guys when we're inside our next match all right guys here we go inside the next match all right let's do this so we have a Night Witch down from Amir, the opponent in the right-hand lane. They go with an Ice Wizard Night Witch combination. Probably a Golem deck that we're facing here. We also see that Baby D and the Dark Prince. So the entire opponent's deck is down here on the defensive end trying to stop this one balloon. Unfortunately, that Musketeer does get retargeted onto the Dark Prince there. She will not take him out. So now we're going to deal with a very unhealthy Dark Prince, Baby D and Ice Wizard. But that log is going to finish off all of those troops. So a nice start here for Famous Kid going in with that a balloon out the gate here in this match so Amir go ahead, goes ahead and he plays the golem in the back let's see if we go balloon we do immediately cycling to another ice golem balloon opposite lane is he gonna give us the tower or not Oh my god, Amir is going to give us the tower here. So he's going for a base race, man. He is going... F oh! No, I stand corrected. One tornado is going to ruin our hope and dreams there, getting that left tower down. So now the opponent, you can see, has two elixir. Three elixir now. They go with an earthquake. This is not what we wanted to see. Can we take down that Night Witch? It looks like we can. We have Snowball in hand, too, as well. So we'll be fine here. Snowball, very, very nicely timed Snowball there. We might go with some skeletons on these, these golemites as well. Sacrifice one elixir. No, it looks like we're just going to go ahead and let it go. Let the musketeer do her thing. Finish that uh, that uh, golemite off. And we will be looking all right there. But yeah, that tornado, not what we really wanted. Now we go with that balloon really, really far to the left-hand side. Making it more difficult to avoid balloon, at least death damage. Then we go with that miner down to assassinate that ice wizard. A log is going to go ahead and push that dark prince off. We have skeletons. Did we play skeletons there? I think skeletons were absolutely evaporated by the uh, the dark prince off of that tower. We do score a, a balloon death damage and a hit on that left tower. So 753 to 136. Six, but still here we're gonna have to get really really creative if we want to win three matches in a row here against this deck very challenging with the tornado the ice wizard the baby d and the night witch all in the same deck so again here playing a little bit of uh, light defense with the musketeer earthquake does come down from the opponent so maybe an over commitment by the opponent giving us a little bit of a window here to go aggressively at this left tower we go in with a minor just making sure that we can at least hopefully get some death damage there okay we are going to go ahead and get that tower down but it's going to be a balloon push coming the opposite direction now notice how amir the opponent went with that very high 
I ice, uh, or excuse me, golem. Not ice golem, it's the big daddy himself, the regular golem. Now, can we cycle back to another bomb tower? We can. We have it in hand. Can we pull him away? No, we can't. We go to Musketeer instead in back. And I think this is going to be GG. He does get death damage from that golem. We go with the ice golem there, buying us a little bit of more time. Nice skeletons there by Famous Kid. And just like that, somehow, some way, able to defend there. So 20 seconds into sudden death overtime, they go with an ice wizard and a night witch in the back. Are we going to go for the three crown? I think we are. Here comes that miner. Baby D's in the cycle. They have that tornado too. They can pull everything over to towards the night witch or towards the center and they get some help from the bats, which, which is exactly what they do. Now they can go with the golem in the pocket. This is going to be very difficult here guys we have bomb tower in hand we pull everybody to the right a little bit we go with that snowball we go with the skeletons earthquake is down from the opponent we go with that miner as well knowing the dark prince is going to come down golem is now on our king tower we're back to another snowball musketeers putting in work we're back to another uh, bomb tower as well bomb tower death bomb is going to help us out there baby d's on the tower baby d is on that tower only gets one shot though look at the king tower down guys down to 12 14 we're going balloon in the right hand lane here it comes another miner at the ready trying to, trying to anticipate where that uh, Ice Wizard's going to come down from. Oh no, we go with the Musketeer in the back. We go with Ice Column on the defensive end. Looks like we will get Balloon Death Damage. Earthquake down from the opponent. Snowball down from our end. And again, able to defend somehow here, guys. We're going with the Balloon again. We go with the Miner. Pull that Night Witch away. Here comes the Baby D. Ice uh, Tornado, excuse me, is back in hand for the opponent. There's only 27 seconds remaining, guys. We just can't get to the tower. Earthquake Cycle is going on from the opponent. We go with one more big Miner push. All we need is one earthquake from the opponent. We have that miner, or we have that balloon getting very close. Tornado comes down. Miner comes down. Earthquake's down. No! So close with 12 seconds remaining, guys. Oh, man. Very challenging matchup, but some incredible defensive plays. Wow, I feel like we should give a round of applause. I've never had such a demonstrative, uh, in terms of sheer defensive power, loss here on the channel that I can recollect. Anyway, guys, that was insane, man. He played very well. We're back to 118. Let's go for at least one more battle. Try to get over the hump of 7,500 trophies again. Be right back when we have a match. All right, guys, here we go in the next one. So we'll see what Famous Kid can do here against this guy who looks to be playing maybe log bait. Yes, definitely log bait with the princess there. So, so far, man, even that, I think that last match, I don't know if you guys agree, that last ma match might have impressed me more than the victory so far on this channel. He played some really, really nice defense. So this time, here comes a Goblin Barrel from the, oh, Double Prince, what? So they go with a double prince. It's bridge spam. I guess I was incorrect. We have skeletons in hand. We don't even need them there. Bomb tower just doing very nice work, bringing everybody close together so the musketeer can poof, 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 triple shot them all down. So here we go. 50 seconds. Oh, the predictive snowball, man. Knowing that the opponent was going to go with the goblin gang. Hey, not too bad, right? Good job by Famous Kid recognizing that, hey, he didn't have his prince, his dark prince, or his bandit in cycle. What's he going to go with? Goblin gang. So that way we at least don't have to deal with them on the opposite end of the arena. So again, happy to use log here against the princess. Now we don't have snowball in hand either. So the opponent could go with an aggressive prince and goblin barrel push. And it looks like they're probably going to do that. No, they don't go. Ooh, the zap comes down. But it was a little bit too late there. Expecting those skeletons to come down. Just not landing. And then again, we're getting the kite job with that, uh, that ice golem. And the musketeer perfectly, beautifully placed at the correct tile. You see why so many people wanted to have this guy on the channel? Because that Musketeer, if it was one tile lower, the Bandit would have went into a double charge onto our tower that saved us, whatever, 500 uh, damage. So we go again with the Snowball here, and again, we're back in this situation where we do have a couple Elixir lead, but the opponent here could go in with a Dark Prince Goblin Barrel push, or Prince Goblin Barrel push. Let's see what they do. We go with the Balloon way in the back. They go with the Prince way in the back. Notice how we go with this Balloon really, really far back. It's something that... We're not used to seeing a lot here on the channel. Nice log by the opponent. We go with the snowball there, getting those bats off of that balloon. We'll at least get the balloon death damage. Might even get a hit here. Nope. 
Okay, so we'll take the death damage. Again, logging the princess every time. Definitely noteworthy, the strategy. And there's no no wonder he's not going with the Goblin Barrel. There is no Goblin Barrel! It's just a weird Bridge Spam deck that really just is kind of a cross hybrid between Bridge Spam and between uh, a, uh, a Bait deck, right? With the princess in there. One Bat does survive. Here we do a nice job of protecting that bomb tower. We get one balloon hit on that right tower. Here we go, guys. Going to be 10 seconds remaining. Now we have another bomb tower down. Two bomb towers. How strong is bomb tower right now, guys? How strong is it? And if you need evidence of that strength, I present to you that last defensive sequence. All right, so here we go in sudden death overtime already here in this match, guys. We're going to go with that ice golem again, not over committing. We don't go with the skeletons there. Now we go with the miner. We go with a oh, beautiful defense. Again, pulling that miner away, or, or the dark prince away with the miner. Now we have the skeleton still in hand for the bandit. The opponent did have zap in hand. They opt to save it for the defensive end, but it's not going to make any difference. Towers down. Very wow. This gameplay keeps getting better and better and better here with famous kid, guys. Wow, this guy's a stud. All right, he is now back at 74 in the world. Let's see if he'll do one more match. If not, I will play. All right, guys, here we go with the last match of the video. Uh, well, of a famous kid. I'm going to play one match myself as well. Uh, but we have, uh, I got a little visitor, a surprise visitor came by, Charlie. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, probably just play one match. I was going to play a few at the end of this video. But I want to give you more of Famous Kid because who wants to watch me when we have the, the privilege of watching Mr. Kid <laughs> uh, on the video? So here we go. Uh, balloon attacking in the right. We get the Miner down as well. Bomb Tower down on the defensive end. So again, Miner Bomb Tower deck. Probably a Wall Breaker deck that we're going against here. Nice job. Can we get that Balloon? Oh, the Balloon goes everywhere except for the Tower. Felt like it kind of did a stutter step there. Jeez. All right, let's see. We have Log in Cycle. We have Snowball, rather, in the Cycle here. That's going to be fine. So hey, we still have the Damage Advantage. Not too bad. So I think it's just a Miner... Uh, is it, does, does that have wall breakers in? Dude, there's so many minor decks, so many skeleton barrel decks that I get them all confused now, guys. <laughs> it's just, it's just, is this just a minor chip deck? Or do they also have wall breakers? I think it's just minor chip. Uh, maybe like Dark Goblin or something? I have no idea. Anyway, here we go. We'll see. I've seen this deck like a billion times, but again, you've seen like so much minor skeleton barrel, so much minor wall breaker that you start to just, at least me, I start to get kind of like, okay, what one is this one again? We would be seeing Dark Goblin if it was in there, so it's not that one. So anyway, bats are in hand right now by the opponent, but they're trying to get them. Okay, we have the snowball ready, but we don't go with the snowball there. So you, you, you can definitely ensure here that Famous Kid had that snowball ready on the offensive end, but he decided not to go with it and make sure he still had that elixir advantage here. We're not even in double elixir time, so just pay, playing things nice and cool. And notice how in single elixir time, one habit that we've already been able to tease out from uh, from our gameplay here, from Famous Kid's gameplay, is that in single elixir time, he just does not go absolutely bonkers on these huge, huge pushes. You can see now we're in double elixir time. Now he has that snowball at the ready. He's probably going to... Oh, he used it! So he didn't use it the first time. He didn't use it the second time. He used it the third time, and it allowed him to take the tower down. Man, how incredible was that, right? He saw it the first time, and he thought, nah, I'm not going to use a snowball. going to save it. Or maybe he didn't have it in hand. Either way, I think he did have it in hand. And then the second time, he's like, nah, I'm going to let it go. going to set myself up for the third time. The third time, when it really mattered... We predictive snowballed in the same location with that guy. He shouldn't have placed his bats in the same location. And now he's given up, ladies and gentlemen. That is going to be a victory for us. Is there time to get the three crown? I think there is. We got two balloons and a musketeer on the tower. Here we go. One balloon and two balloon. And three, two, one. And we get the three crown. All right. Well played, famous kid. Well played indeed. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and give this deck a try, man. This one's really, really fun. So let's go ahead and uh, see how we do. 2.9 balloon cycle. Try me. All right, man. All right. I'll try you. So I do have Balloon in my starting hand, as you guys can see. I have Skeletons as well. I have Miner as well. Then I'm just going to go ahead and... Oh, man. Uh, oh, I have to uh, have to log because I missed one of those Skeletons. How could I do that? I don't know. But this is Ash here, not Famous Kid. Just a reminder to you guys. Just a reminder. So he's playing 2.6, it looks like. So that means he has Cannon and he has a, a Musketeer in hand. 
Cannon Musketeer. He also is back to his Hog Rider. So we're just going to go with Bomb Tower here. So, let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and go in with a little Balloon Push. He's probably going to go with an Ice Spirit right there. Okay. What a beautiful predictive uh, log there, huh? Am I doing exactly what I said that he didn't do in going too aggressive? You guys can be the judge. All right. So that didn't really work out too well, but the Death Bomb does take care of that Hog Rider. It's going to balloon this away, or balloon, uh, snowball this away, and he gets another hit. I did get some death damage there, so uh, not too bad. We're not too far behind here, but I can't lie and say that I'm thrilled with the results uh, thus far. So we're just going to log this and cycle skeletons real quickly here. He has, uh, obviously, Fireball as well, so we do want to be ready for that. We're going to go Musketeer opposite lane. And let's see what he does here. going to try to sneak in an Ice Golem. So now he doesn't have his... Now that he doesn't have his Cannon back in Cycle, I think I'm going to... Nah. Okay, that didn't go well. I guess I should have attacked there. I was too passive. Still able to defend just fine. But who cares, right? So he has Fireball in hand. I don't think I need to do anything here. Okay, going in. Going in! Did he miss my musky? He might have missed my musky. Okay. So I'm not going to be able to get to the tower here, unfortunately. I will get more death damage. Gonna log this. Gonna see if he's gonna fireball here. He's not gonna fireball, so we'll set up opposite lane. I'm being a little bit too... Don't need to go in there. Okay. So he has to fire. I get a musky on that left tower. That's good. He had to fireball on the defensive end, so that's fine. I shouldn't have used my... Okay, okay. Get this back in cycle. This guy's going so aggressive! I guess he has to, right? He's gonna go with a log here. I think I have to snowball this. Oof, this is a tight one, guys. He's gonna try to fireball cycle me out. We're not gonna let him. Gonna go this. Gonna go this. He has a fireball in hand. Oh, 121. Boom! All right, holy crapola. Dude, that was some really iffy gameplay there. I apologize. I apologize. That was like sacrilege there uh, to poor famous kid, but somehow we were able to take down Try Me from Confidence Man. Tough against those fireball cycles, but still I made a bunch of awful plays. Still able to come out on top. Granted, I haven't pushed, as you can see from my empty chest slots here, in a few days. So I am a little bit low in trophies. I will go ahead and do that for the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. A huge shout out to uh, Famous Kid. Check out his player stats and profile things to StatsReal.com. Thank you for using my creator code, CWA. Check out Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. His information will be there in the show notes below, along with the deck link, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always... Take care, guys.